हेलो फ्यूचर मेकर्स वेलकम टू टीचर प्रेमियर क्लासरूम मैनेजमेंट इज नॉट अबाउट हैविंग द राइट रूल्स बट इट इज अबाउट हैविंग द राइट रिलेशनशिप क्लासरूम मैनेजमेंट इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट कैन हेल्प इन एनहैंसिंग द एकेडमिक लर्निंग ऑफ द स्टूडेंट इंप्रूविंग देर इंटरेस्ट इन द क्लास इट इज यूजली बिलीव दैट हैंडलिंग प्री प्राइमरी किड्स इज द इजिएस्ट थिंग टू डू बट दिस इज अ बिग मिथ pre primary students are the most challenging to handle because half of them want to drink water they also need help to go to the zoo it's really challenging to make them all sit at one place because they want to explore and learn the world around them as a mother of a toddler jab mere liye apne bacche ko sambhalna itna mushkil hai imagine the plight of the teacher she has not one not two but 20 students at once If you are that pre-primary teacher who is finding it really difficult to handle your small small kids, then today's video is definitely for you. Today we will discuss the top classroom management tips for pre-primary kids. Each of this tip is highly researched and is formatted by keeping in mind the age group of the students. We guarantee that if you watch the full video, you will be able to manage and handle your class much more effectively than what you are doing right now. So if you want all of this value in less than 10 minutes keep on watching The first tip that we would like to give you is to make learning fun वो छोटे छोटे बच्चे अभी पढ़ाई के लिए तैयार नहीं है मेक योर टीचिंग एज फन एंड एज एंगेजिंग एज पॉसिबल यूज पपेट टॉयज मास्क वॉट एवर यू नीड टू मेक इट फन वाई यू लर्न कीप ऑल ऑफ दीज रिसोर्सेज हैंडी विथ यू इन योर क्लास सो दैट वेन एवर यू थिंक दैट द चिल्ड्रेन आर नॉट एबल टू एंगेज इन द क्लास यू कैन क्विकली टेक वन एंड मोल्ड इट इन टू योर टीचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ट्रस्ट मी दे लव टू प्ले सो मेक देम प्ले वाई दे लर्न The second thing that you need to keep in your mind while handling small students is that build relationships first and then teach. Understand that they are really emotional and new to this outside world. They are only used to their own family and their own surroundings and home. School environment is new to them. Some of them have separation anxiety. Some of them are missing their family. It is also difficult to communicate because you might not understand their language or some might even not have started talking. So how will they be able to tell you their needs? Some may be hyperactive and some may be introverts. Dealing with all of these kids in a short span of 1 to 3 hours is difficult. The sooner you will start to build connections with them, the better they will trust you and be easier for you to communicate. The third tip that we would like to give you is to have a schedule and set separate time for indoor as well as outdoor activities. Include sand play, water play, messy play, taking them to the park, taking them to the play area and taking them to the corridor of the school in your schedule it's not necessary to do this every single day but it's important to give them enough and correct exposure so that they can develop faster if you develop their sensory abilities correctly then you yourself will notice improvement in their communication skills self confidence and creativity and imagination another thing that you need to keep in mind is to use simple language and keep the activities as easy as possible they don't have a wide vocabulary so keep it very simple and to the point sit down stand up turn around very few such instructions should be said in the class so that they can understand and follow it well the activities that have been planned for them should be very on the go learning for example match the following coloring tracing the lines etc their skills have to be developed but the activities should be doable for each and every child remember less is more the next suggestion from our side is to include a lot of bodily movements in the class these small kids have immense energy in them sometimes it is difficult for us as teachers to match their energy levels so utilize this energy in a positive manner include as much movement as possible in your class for example ask them to jump run skip crawl do frog jump etc the more they do this the happier they will be and if they are happier you will be the happiest as a teacher one thing that all pre primary teachers must do is positive reinforcement sometimes these kids could be really stubborn they would not do if they don't want to do any activity at that point of time these reinforcement really helps 
always keep stickers or balloons within your reach. And if you think a child has done commendable job, then take out those stickers and give it to the kids. Remember, no chocolates are to be given during this activity. Using chocolates as reinforcement is the wrong way of teaching because we also need to tell the kids the importance of having healthy food. Two things to keep in mind. Firstly, this should not become a habit in the classroom. It should only be done occasionally. Secondly, always gauge the performance of a child and compare it to his or her own performance in the previous assignment. Never compare a child's performance to the other one. They are too small to get into the rat race of competition. Even if they reach their personal goals, it is a big win-win situation for the both of you. One thing that I would highly suggest to all the pre-primary teachers is to give a visual theatrical experience to your students. They can't imagine a lot of things because they have not been exposed to the outside world as yet. You only have to use their imagination creatively and tell them what is happening around them. For example, if you are telling them a story, don't just simply say, use voice modulations, use puppets, use masks, use those dresses, use soft toys. It is a great way to interact and introduce new concepts to your child. Keep talking to them, keep asking them questions and make sure you give the correct expressions while you tell the story as well. With this, you will have all their eyes and attention on you and you will be able to deliver your class better. As a pre-primary teacher, one quality that you must have is flexibility. Always be flexible in your approach while teaching the students. They are not big kids that they will always listen to you. Every day will be a challenge for you and sometimes things will go according to the plan. Sometimes you might not be able to complete the portion and sometimes you will be surprised that they already knew the colors and hence you have a lot of time left for some another activity. No matter what happens in the classroom, you have to be prepared for it and always be flexible. There are high chances that sometimes one of the child starts crying, one of them is hungry, one of them has to go to the loo, kissing up mitifir me kuch gira diya. Some people even pee in their own pants. Though you have the help of the didi, but the attention span of all other students gets diverted and they are confused whether to listen to the teacher or look at the other child. Trust me, I've also had instances in my classroom where ek bachcha rota hai, to the whole class wants to cry. Aise time pe, don't lose your control, be calm and be flexible. If you want to discipline the kids properly, one thing that you must do is to set boundaries and stick to them. You always have to be consistent with your instructions and make sure that the kid understands that whenever you say this, they are supposed to do that only. For example, whenever I wanted all of the kids to make a circle, I used to start singing. Let's make a circle round our sun. Let's make a circle include everyone. As soon as I started singing this, Kids will know that we have to hold each other's hand and form a circle. It takes two minutes for me to form a circle with the students because I have always been consistent with my approach. In this manner, you can figure out what works for your students and follow it all the time. One thing that will make you an effective teacher in the long run will be to give them independence. Encourage the child to take their own responsibility. Give them a choice and let them decide what they want to do. You could team them up in small groups or they could do the activity individually. But offer choices and give them values of sharing and caring. Let's say you have a limited toys for the playtime and there are a lot of kids. Divide them into small groups and tell them that once you are done playing with it and when I say reverse, you have to pass this toy to the next group and take another toy to play. Gradually, you will get a chance. This is the correct time to lay the foundation of your kid's personality. If you give them the correct value and if you give them the independence to choose, they will always carry this throughout their life and they will all be thankful to you. Last but not the least, Use visual aids to decorate your classroom. The more colorful your classroom is, the more excited they will be to come to your class. 
If you are able to visually appeal your students to your classroom, they will look forward to learning from you and coming to the school every single day. If you want us to prepare a separate video on how to decorate your classroom effectively, then comment down below, I want decoration video. And if we get 25 comments on this video, we promise to come up with a new video where we give you best ways to decorate your classroom in cost effective manner. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching the whole video. At the end, I would only like to tell you that classroom management is like the white screen in the movie theater. We always tend to ignore it, but without it, the show can't go on. If you like the tips mentioned in today's video, then do hit the like button. Comment down, I want decoration video if you want us to prepare a new video on classroom decoration. Share this video with your teacher friends and family and subscribe to Teacher Pinner and press that bell icon to be a part of our Future Makers family. See you soon.